Hello all, thank you for attending the National Pesticide Forum, and welcome to part two of Beyond Pesticides website overview and how to. I'm Drew Tower, the Community Resource and Policy Director at Beyond Pesticides, and for this part we're going to focus on the advocacy tools that Beyond Pesticides has available for activists and policymakers. Say you're concerned about the use of pesticides in your child's school. Our Children in Schools program page can help you get educated about this issue so that you're comfortable talking with school administrators and school board officials about the use of toxic pesticides. Navigate under programs to the Children and Schools page. Clicking through provides a general overview of the hazards pesticides pose to children and the importance of alternative pest management practices. Clicking further below the overview page, and you'll get in-depth pages on the hazards of pesticides. Bolded dated points on this page can help you make the case to school officials, and videos from past forums provide an even more detailed understanding of the issue. Further below, you'll find a page on alternative pest management practices that can be used both outdoors and inside the school classroom. Once you have the ear of elected officials or school board members, click on our model school policies where you'll find model legislation and both state and local examples of forward thinking pest management policies. Additional publications or reports are also available for your review. Maybe you're concerned about the food your child eats at school. For information about the pesticides that can be used on non-organic crops, this time navigate to resources and click on the Eating with a Conscience database. Go to choose a fruit or vegetable. Let's go with apples. On that page, you'll see that pesticide use on food is about more than the over 100 different pesticides that could be sprayed on apples. The Eating with a Conscience database takes a holistic viewpoint with an understanding that farm workers and pollinators can be poisoned by the same pesticides that may have left residue on your child's apple. This resource enables you to strengthen your argument to school staff and administrators about the importance of providing organic options to school cafeterias. It's also important to protect children outside of school grounds, where they, their pets, and other sensitive populations can be exposed to pesticides on public parks, playgrounds, and other landscapes around your community. You may be concerned about the use of glyphosate, 2,4-D, and other toxic pesticides in these spaces, and may want to get your community on board with organic practices. Or your neighbors might be using a chemical lawn company, and you may want to learn how to talk to them about pesticide use and provide them with information on alternatives. Our non-toxic lawn and landscapes page has you covered. Scroll into resources and click through. On our overview page, you'll find some examples of what you can do in your backyard, like display a ladybug or honeybee pesticide-free zone sign, which we have available on our online store. You can also learn how to be a model for your neighbors by going organic on your own property. In your community, you can pick up a pack of doorknob hangers to distribute to neighbors, also available in our store, and the first 25 uh, doorknob hangers are free. But to get the most in-depth information on how to start organizing in your community, go to our Tools for Change page. There you'll find fact sheets for guidance on how to talk to neighbors and start your own local movement. If you're a policymaker or an advocate working with a policymaker, we encourage you to make use of our model ordinance. But before you do so, you want to determine your state's preemption status. Currently, for most states, pesticide policies can only apply to public property due to regressive state-level preemption laws. 
Click on our preemption document hyperlinked here to find a map of your state status. Scroll down. You'll see a list here. And here is our map. Note, if your state does have preemption, it's still worth it to fight for a pesticide policy that applies to public property, as it shows state lawmakers the desire for local communities to manage pesticides in a way that best reflects their unique local environment and residents' needs. If you're looking for more ideas on our beyond our model policies, you can scroll down to Beyond Pesticides map of US pesticide reform. This map, if you click here, will show the key. It tracks policies for publicly owned spaces in red, pesticide-free park policies in green, those that apply to both public and private property in blue, and policies aimed to protect pollinators in yellow. Clicking on a box will bring up the name of the locality, the policy type, a brief note describing the policy, and a direct link to review the policy. You can also open the map up in its own window. If you're looking for the pesticide policies that Beyond Pesticides would consider a better model throughout the country, use the search function at the top of the page and type in organic methods. You'll find 45 policies across the country that embrace an organic approach to pest management. Subsections below the Tools for Change webpage provide even more details and helpful information for your advocacy efforts, including our page on products compatible with organic landscape management. This list provides extensive examples of pesticides that meet our criteria for least toxic. And those are those that are certified organic or considered minimum risk by EPA. These are the least toxic yet still effective products on the market. They are separated out by pesticide type. And again, thinking holistically, we also want to eliminate the use of chemical fertilizers and have provided a resource with companies that produce, produce certified organic fertilizers. But a word of caution with this resource. Beyond Pesticides does not endorse a product swap approach. Toxic pesticides like glyphosate should not simply be replaced with least toxic pesticides without a concomitant change in practices. To that end, not only does Beyond Pesticides provide background on the hazards, information on the benefit of alternatives, and policy solutions at the local level, we also provide a model implementation guide that local communities can make use of. You'll find that here in another subsection below Tools for Change. This guide provides in-depth documents on maintaining and establishing sustainable lawns and landscapes. It also provides fact sheets on soil testing, protecting pollinators, and more that communities can publish to assist landscapers and community residents in moving towards organic practices. This overview provides only a brief look at the resources we have available to assist advocates and policymakers. In addition to schools, food safety, and lawn and landscape use, our programs and resources span a range of subject areas, including mosquito control, golf courses, pollinator and wildlife protection, toxic wood preservatives, threatened waterways, and more. In addition to our extensive website, Beyond Pesticides is unique in that we take calls directly from the public. We encourage those working in their community to reach out for one-on-one -on -one discussions about their efforts. Send us an email at info at beyondpesticides.org or call us at 202-543-5450. The pesticide reform movement is growing in success because of you. As our map shows, communities large and small, from Skagway, Alaska, to South Miami, Florida, Cuyahoga County, Ohio, to New York City have all enacted pesticide laws that encourage safer, non-chemical and organic practices. 
thank you again for attending the National Pesticide Forum.